Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Gulf Stream Today. Ron Nicoletti. It is a Thursday, uh, Thursday morning, I should say, 1134. Uh, the main track is fast. We got the torpedo, the all weather. You can see the tracks being main maintained up, uh, ready to get going in just a little while. Our final week of the Flamingo Festival will be running Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Then we're off for uh, about 11 days of racing. And of course, you can come out and watch the simulcasting. We're back for the championship meet on the December 3rd, but that's down the road. We got an exciting week coming up. Mandatory payouts in the Rainbow Six on Saturday and on Sunday, everything when the meet ends. So uh, we'll keep you abreast of that situation as it goes on. A nice jackpot guarantee in the Rainbow Six a little later on this afternoon. So we got lots going on this uh, today and this weekend, of course. Tomorrow, the Stronic Five, we'll be talking about that a little later on also. So uh, let's get right into the Thursday card. We're starting it off on the fast main track, five and a half furlongs, maiden claiming two year olds, $35,000. Full field of nine will go to the post this afternoon. And the current favorite at five to two, and it was really low on the morning line. I think this horse might go down a little bit. And that's fishing for fun to number four. And here's why three for three in the money sprinting here, including if you go back, a well meant second place finish behind a uh, multiple stakes winner, Octane, who was really a star during the Florida Cyrus Sake series, uh, returns locally and back in the Ronnie Spatz barn after chasing Fade Annie. That was again special weight competition up at Belmont Sprinting on their main track. Miguel Vasquez in the saddle, so a little home cooking coming back where this horse has run exceptionally well. Then you got the number seven horse in here, currently three to one, and that's Hey Ombre, who's dropping to this level today of $35,000 after facing state bred special weight competition in three prior races, which includes that third place finish behind a runaway winner that day, Simplification, who just blew the doors off the competition. Didn't come back and run that well in its next start, but on that day, nobody was beaten Simplification. Simplification. So if you key off that performance, certainly this horse has a shot in there with the drop to the 35 level. Then you got Commanding, who's a half-brother to a couple of really hard-knocking local runners, Joe DiBaggio one and Archer Road the other. Joe DiBaggio seems to run every two weeks and run well. So this one has a consistent work tab showing it's an Arendelle home bed trained by Carlos David. I found a stat. Carlos, just over the last couple of years with his two-year-old first-time starters, maiden claimers, three for 17 18%, 41% in the money. 630 is the return investment. So one of those three horses was certainly a bomb ski or paid very nicely in there. So for me in the opener, it's four, seven, and that first time starter number five commanding who's sitting up there right now at nine to two, very, very early in the wagering. We're going to race number two this afternoon. Five and a half furlongs, maiden claiming Phillies two-year-olds also on the fast main track, 35,000. Did have a scratch in here of the number four horse. So I went, and this I believe is the morning line favorite, and that's the seven, Leviosa, who's dropping today to the 35 level after following that fourth place finish. That was against special weight runners here on the main track. Then comes back, duels in the race and faders. That's going five and a half furlongs on the Saratoga turf. Coming back down south for leading trainer, Safi Joseph Jr., who's almost 40% with similar class drops. Edgar Zayas, our leading rider, will be in the saddle today. Then you got the number eight in here, Arate's Chalice, who's uh, dropping back to the 35 level today after chasing the leader, finishing second. That was against 50 maidens last time out. Henry Colazzo, Chantal Sutherland in the irons. I think 35 is the key level for this horse this afternoon. And what about the number three in here, Our Girls Worth It, who's dropping to this level on the main track after dueling for the lead. Now, she tied in that race to finish fifth in her special weight debut. That was going five and a half furlongs on the torpedo. I think a poor is that run and show speed on the Peter. Come back when they go to the main track, run well, they get legged up nicely. And Georgina Baxter is pretty good. She's three for 10, 30% with Maidens making their second start. So a limited sampling, but a good sampling for the number three, Our Girls Worth It. So Leviosa is going to be the big favorite, but maybe you look at Arete's Challenge and number three, Our Girls Worth It. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, I'll have my Rainbow Six ticket.
at the 12 as they roll into the backstretch. Welcome back, Gulfstream. Today, we run Nicoletti here. Nice day in South Florida. Partly cloudy. they saying there might be rain later. I'm going to go with the positive side and say no. The third race today is about a mile of 70 yards. It's going to be our first race today on the Tapita. Claim is three-year-olds of four and up. Nonwood is of three in life or a race since May 18th. So triple conditions here, $35,000 down to $25,000 and advertised. Uh, let's take a look at my Rainbow Six ticket with $600,000 gross guarantee pool today. So I, I stepped it up, 5760. I couldn't figure out the first uh, leg and I didn't want to get knocked out. I, I mean, I like Mohawk. The North remembers outshine, but I, you know, you just got to see how this horse runs this afternoon. Uh, the, the, the favorite in there, who I wasn't that enamored with, but I couldn't get beat by, of course, uh, the number four with the Steve Claceres and Paco Lopez. Uh, too deep in race number four with Glorious Business and Willie the Shoe. Got a, actually got to meet Willie Shoemaker once when he ran here in the Breeders' Cup back in 1989, I believe it was, or something like that. Fifth race, uh, three deep with Brett's World, Sassy but Smart. Churchill's victory, 12 to 1. I think that horse got a shot that maybe upset in there. Race number six, three deep with Great Warrior, frankly, my dear, and High Speed Step. Another one I didn't want to get beat by Safi Joseph Jr., so I added that one to my ticket. I'm hoping that number seven, Starship, uh, in race number seven, the two Starship Nala bounces back. Has been running good as of late. And Lori Lupies is also on my ticket. And in the final race, just two deep with Chucky and the number four, Boldness. So uh, getting back to race number three this afternoon. Afternoon. Uh, we'll go through it right now. And, you know, we're going to start it off. I'll talk about Mohawk first, who's turning back just a little bit a after setting the pace and finishing second. It was against this level of opposition that was going about a mile in the 16th on the Zapita. Lionel Reyes is going to ride for 1C Avila. So I just thought that this horse, off that performance, uh, second choice on the morning line, would be a major player in here. But I wanted to go back and revisit the number one, the North Remembers. We try these condition claimers today. Uh, first, we're going to show the North Remembers early on in the race, getting shuffled back soon after the start, the number six horse, and you're going to see it just one of those things where they really had to put the brakes on, and no one puts you right behind, you know, and they get to back, and they had to reshuffle this horse back, and you know, it's very hard to recover from that uh, when you're running, you know, running, but look at this nice performance, you're going to see the horse right there, great job by Bob, pointing out the number six horse in here, that the North Remembers, just thought it was a good performance, you know, gets blocked and steady in the stretch, so it's not over yet. The trouble's not over. You can see here, this horse really had nowhere to go besides getting shuffled back early. That brakes on, just nowhere to go. Once this horse gets a little bit of clear sailing, starts to close, it starts to dig in and almost wins it. So double trouble in that race for the number six. The North remembers will be the number one today. So early trouble, and you saw that nowhere to run in the stretch last time out. Ridden again today by Chantal Sutherland. The number two, Outshine, is debuting on the Tapita. After that okay campaign against similar quality, uh, that was, you know, on the turf before going to the sidelines in June. Uh, Dan Peters, the trainer, he's got Christian Torres in the saddle this afternoon. So thought this one was a logical contender. The the horse I was talking about, the number four, Castagno, uh, you know, was from the Steve Claceres barn, was against Allowance Company up at Park, ran okay at Belmont. Look at those numbers on the back figs in there. Just did not want to get beat with this horse this afternoon. So we'll see how this horse runs. And of course, Paco Lopez, I believe, has got four victories already. He's only had like 12 bounces or something like that. So he's doing good. Did not want to get beat in my Rainbow Six with that horse. So, and, and probably going to take tons of money in there. But the North remembers coming in with a lot of uh, trouble last time out. Let's go to race number four today. And this one is about five furlongs on the all-weather surface. This is Maiden claiming two-year-olds. We do have a scratch in here of the number five horse, but we still got a full field of nine. And I'm going to start it off with Glorious Business, who moves to the Sappy Joseph Jr. Bond after the claim. It cuts back to five furlongs. I'm going to go back and show you this horse's last race when uh, pick it up at the 316th pole home when he battles the wire and finishes second. I just thought it was a good performance. 
performance, you know, it was against symbol of quality, and, and I thought the hand, horse ran very well on the torpedo last time out. Uh, the, you know, the barn is excellent with new claims, and there you see how hard this horse fought on. It was the 6-5 to five favorite that day, but moving to Sappy's barn, you know, he's 25% with new claims. Edgar Zayas is the top there. New acquisition. So ran a really nice race last time out. Uh, you know, I thought this horse would run well. As I mentioned, Willie the Shoe, uh, for Willie Shoemaker, I'm sure. This one going to the Danny Gargan barn. The freshman tries to defeat it today. After showing some early interest in fading in his 25 debut, going five and a half furlongs on the Delaware main track. Uh, the barn is 31% with new additions to their barn to the shed row. You get Miguel Vasquez handling the inside draw. And to me, this is more of just a, a play with the, you know, the conditioner uh, that Danny Gargan does exceptionally well down here. And of course, Miguel Vasquez, one of our top riders. So Willie shoe on my ticket. And you got the four, it's not easy. Who's the son of the big beast, debuting free trainer Kent Sweezy, Paco Lopez named to ride. Uh, you know, I just, you watch the toad accident in here. What's this horse on the morning line? Uh, six to one, I believe six or eight to one. So we'll see how the horse runs. But I think the 10 horse in there is going to take most of the money, six to five on the morning line. Do you single a horse like that in the late pick five, which starts in race number four? Or did you single it when you started your Rainbow Six ticket? That's what you got to figure out today. Race Five this afternoon, a one-mile claimer. We're back on the fast main track. Three-year-olds or four-year-olds and up. None winners of three in life. 20 down to 16. Did have two scratches in this race to the three and the four. And Flipping Fish, the number four, was my long shot today. I was hoping that horse ran. Reclaimed by... Uh, Ronnie Spats, but not going to run today. So it r looks like Brett's world is really going to be tough in here. And this one also changing barns, going to the Gilberto Zerpa barn after the claim and steps up the competition. We're going to go back and show you this horse is race two from 316 home. You, if you watched this race earlier on, I didn't want to show it, but just battled with everybody. Everybody was trying to take the lead away from this horse. And all of a sudden just spurts clear and wins it by like six and a half lengths. Man, early on, if you listen to Pete Aiello's call, He's saying, boy, they're trying to get this horse. They just were on him, and he just, you know, found that other gear and drew clear today. And, and you know, Gilberto Zerpa, he's 28% with new claims, and he's got the one and only Paco Lopez in the saddle today. So Brett's world looking awful tough today, as I mentioned, the three and four. Then you got the seven, sassy, but Smart, who's cutting back to the one turn mile on the dirt and going to wear blinkers this afternoon. After setting the pace throughout before getting nailed at the wire, it was that 12 5 claimer. It was going a mile into 16th on the turf. Peter Walder, who claimed this horse last time out, is 25% with the turf to dirt move. I thought it was a nice performance. Edgar Zayas is going to hop aboard. And then the horse that I mentioned when I was talking about my Rainbow Six, Churchill's Victory. This one, listen, this one might be a sneaky in here. Turning back to the mile on the dirt. Returned from about a seven-month layoff, a little over seven months, to set the pace and tire. And I thought it was a perfect setup today for going back to the main track at a one-turn mile. That one was going about a mile 70 yards. And the torpedo happy altar as Miguel Vasquez in the saddle. I just thought off that performance, got legged up there. You're looking for a long shot in race number five. Maybe you put a horse like the two Churchill's victory somewhere on your your ticket 12 to 1 on the morning line going to race number six this afternoon and this one is also on the tapita at about five and one half furlongs it's a maiden special weight for phillies and mares three-year-olds and upwards scratch the number four in here starship mandate and i went with the great warrior number five the Irish bred, who's uh, turning back to five and a half furlongs on this tapita surface today. First start since finishing fourth. That was against Maiden Special Weight Company. Now he's going a mile in the 16th on the turf here. But it was last February. But Mark Cassie, he's solid with horses going from turf to synthetic. You know, big sampling. He's 20%. He's got his go-to rider, Edmund Gonzalez. Boy, have they teamed up and been fantastic all summer and now fall long. This is a regally bred daughter of Warfront. Warfront's my favorite on the turf. We'll see how this one runs on the, the all-weather surface today. 
The number one, frankly, my dear, uh, I think should attract some attention in here. She returns from the layoff. She, you know, with blinkers. Uh, in the first race, she finished uh, second. It was against those state-bred special weight runners going six on the main track. It was during July. Rajiv Mirage handles the move to the Tapita today. I just thought this horse was interesting enough to be on my try or super ticket. And then, as I mentioned, also when I was talking about my Rainbow Six ticket, I wasn't going to get beat by Sappy in here with the number six high speed. Step, who's going to try the all weather today at five and a half furlongs after pressing the winner last time out ended up finishing a distant second against maiden special weight runners that was going six on the dirt it's sappy it's edgard it's a hundred and forty thousand dollars son of liam's map and you know i'm not going to let a horse like this beat me on my rainbow six ticket certainly going to always we're going to use it in my trying super but i added it to my rainbow six ticket which made it bump up to that 57 bucks so with that We'll take a short break. We'll come back for our late daily double and today's lightning round. Start winning at the races with Daily Racing Forum's new mobile pass performances. Access the most trusted information in horse racing, including exclusive buyer speed figures and DRF analysis and selections. Experience the new mobile optimized DRF pass performances on your phone from anywhere at any time. Go to DRF.com slash now. Use coupon code now to get a free single card and get the power of DRF in the palm of your hand. Welcome back. Race number seven this afternoon. Ron Nicoletti here. It's about 39 minutes to first race post uh, opening uh, day of the final four days of the fall meeting here, the Flamingo Festival meeting. So we got the Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We're going to kick off the late daily double here with a six furlong allowance optional claimer for fillies and mares, three-year-olds and up the optional clag of tag of 62,500 our feature race of the afternoon and I did go with the number two Starship Nala who's turning back to six furlongs today uh, after following that second place finish to stable mid Starship Bonita that was in the seven furlong sheer drama race we're going to show you in a minute but comes back in its next race has that slow starting third against this level of competition but that was going a mile on the seal sloppy track I like the fact that this mare is two for three at the distance now I want to go back and show you that performance in the sheer drama when she gets beat by her 30 to 1 stable mate that day and here you're going to just pick it up in the stretch here and you're going to see she's on the lead at 16 to 1 and this is all about Steve Dwoskin in this race she's getting a little leg weary she's 16 to 1 and here comes her stable mate to get up and just nip her at the wire I thought it was a good performance and basically what I'm doing here with Starship Nala why I like this horse this afternoon is the turn back in distance and I just thought this horse didn't run badly at going that mile i think the three quarters like i said two for three at the distance might be a good spot but you got to use the one Lori loopies too this one's in for the $62,500 tag in this optional claimer. It's a daughter of Rattlesnake Bridge. She makes her first start. She defeated 25 optional claimers. That was going six in the slop during September. Safi Joseph Jr., 23% uh, with similar type layoffs like this. Whatever you want to make it, 23, 25. He's always right there. Edgar Zay is handling the return to action. And what about the number seven, Compensate, who I find interesting? Interesting, excuse me, a winner in the dirt at this level and distance back in April. That goes back to the main track after stalking the pace and finishing fourth. That was against those 62,500 optional claimers going the about distance of five on the Tapita for Cam Gambolati, Miguel Vasquez. I think this horse is a major player in this race. I think going back to the main track is really going to help this horse this afternoon with nine to two on the morning line. I think that's a pretty square price. When you go back and look at this race, maybe you give this horse a second look in there. Lori Lupis is the morning line favorite. Race number eight this afternoon, and this one is a one-mile claimer on the fast main track. And these are three and up, non-winners of two races in life, 12.5 down to 10,000. 
clean slate, no jockey changes, no scratches, nine in the field. Went with Chucky, who's making a usually fruitful third start back from a layoff. Followed that 12-5 maiden victory with a second place finish. That was against 22 lifetime claimers going a mile last time out. Jorge Delgado, got go-to rider Chantal handling the drop to the 12-5 level. I just think this is the, the, the spot for this horse this afternoon. Chucky, of course, going to be the morning line favorite at 3-2-1 in there. But what about boldness? who's another dropping to this 12-5 level today after setting the pace and weakening. Finished third behind Chucky last time out. David Forks, Embassy El Jaramillo in the irons. Chantal going to arrive. Chucky, that's her go-to uh, uh, trainer. So I can understand the jockey switch here. I think both of these horses, I use both on my ticket. Then the number nine converter, who's hoping to find more firepower today for the stretch drive. After responding to the surface switch from the turf to the dirt, went up, pressed the pace in that race, was second at the same level and distance. So has a chance to uh, have the old proverbial screws be tight in th this afternoon. So that is the eight race card. We got $600,000 in the Rainbow Six, as you know. Now let's take a look at our lightning round. And as we do each and every Thursday when we come back, we check out the jockey and trainer standings. And these are updated to today. And you can see Edgar Zayas was battling in there. 34 wins, but look how good Chantal Sutherland is doing. 26 wins, she's in second. And then you see MSC El Jaramillo, 23. Sammy Camacho will be heading up to Tampa, or maybe he went there already. He's in fourth, tied with Miguel Vasquez, who does an excellent job, one of my favorite riders here. But Edgar Zayas sitting there trying to get his second consecutive uh, meet, uh, winning meet the, the for the tr uh, train jockeys, excuse me, in there. And then the trainer situation, Safi threw it into overdrive once again. 29, foregone conclusion, he's going to win this fall meet. Jorge Delgado, just a good, good meet with 16. And David Forks, take, check out this number. He's 10 for 20, 50% on the tapita. He has been incredible on that. Antonio with 12 and Mr. Mark Cassie with nine. So, uh, you know, just a, a nice uh, way to end the week. These guys battling it to the wire, maybe not in the trainer standings. Uh, so we'll see how that works out. Got some news uh, on the West Coast. I, I find this real interesting. Santa Anita is announcing a turf starter series uh, for Phillies and Mares. It'll be eight races for them going long, going short. And it begins on January 17th. So I, I just thought that was a good uh, thing to let you know about. And look at Santa Anita. It's absolutely gorgeous. If you don't ever have a chance to get there, you got to go check it out. So, uh, you know, nice series, and I love any kind of those grass races. I'll be partaking in that. Of course, tomorrow, Friday, Stronic 5. Let's see the rundown here, what we got going on. We got two from Gulfstream Park where we kick it off at Maryland about 3.30. Then we Gulfstream's race 8, back to Maryland, and then at Golden Gate Fields. And we end it at Gulfstream Park, race number 9 this afternoon, taking another trip to the West Coast. The Eclipse Awards have been here for many years. It will now be at Santa Anita Park on February 10th, and your tickets are now on sale. So make sure if you're out that way, go visit that beautiful racetrack, and then maybe go check out the Eclipse Awards this year. We'll see who gets it. It's going to be an interesting affair. So that's the lightning round. Took care of all the business. Uh, we got my buddy, Gabe Pruitt, in the hot seat upstairs all week long. He's going to finish out the meet for the vacationing uh, Pete Aiello. So, Gabe, uh, take it over in just a couple of minutes with those scratches and jockey changes. Pegasus, the divine winged horse that flew with heroes mounted for glory. Here begins our story of legendary times, the rarefied air when the stakes are high. Like the moment when you feel the vibe, the thunder and the lightning on the track, the energy in the stands, like music moving through your soul, shaking your hips, making you dance. The stars come out of the magic city, from Pegasus they stay, dressed in designers, newest finds, wishing all days could be like this. A moment in the sun, where everything is divine. Rocks the runway, Snoop Dogg making it rain. A 
Jennifer Lopez family affair. Vin Diesel found out that cars aren't the only thing that are fast and furious. This, this, this. Runway on the rail. 